Good morning, everyone. It's time for breakfast. So today I am going to tell you all about what I eat for breakfast every day. If you're new here, welcome. My name's Maria and I hope you'll hit the subscribe button below. And if you're not new here, welcome back to my kitchen. It's great to see you again. I've been eating the same breakfast almost every day since 2017. Back in 2017, I was traveling a lot for work and sometimes I would be traveling for up to two weeks at a time and I would be traveling across the country. I was constantly jet lagged. And what made it even more difficult is I'm one of those people who wakes up in the morning pretty hungry. Waking up very hungry in the morning in a hotel room in an unfamiliar space, I was left with very few options for what I could do for breakfast. The first one, pretty obvious, I could just not have breakfast, go hungry, be miserable, be moody, but that was not a good idea. I tried it a few times and I don't recommend it, but maybe it works for you, I don't know. The second option was I could pick up fast food on the way to work. And as much as I love hash browns, this usually made me feel very tired and sluggish for the rest of the day. So I also don't recommend making that a daily habit if you're in the same situation. My final option involved eating the free hotel breakfast. And I don't know if you've ever tried to do this for a couple of consecutive days, but those fake eggs and pancakes and whatever else really starts to take a toll on your body. After a couple of days, I could not even stand the smell of the fake eggs. Even looking at them, I felt like my body started to reject them even before I would put them in my mouth. So that option really did not work out for me. Most of the hotel rooms that I stayed in had a little mini fridge and usually had a microwave. So occasionally I got really lucky when I had leftovers from dinner the night before. But whenever I didn't have leftovers, I was left pretty distressed about the whole situation. Late one night on a Saturday in 2017, as I was packing for a work trip, I had thought about packing some granola bars. Usually granola bars are pretty high in sugar, it was not an ideal solution. I realized, what can I make in the microwave? I can make oatmeal. Unfortunately, being a picky eater, I can't stand the taste of oatmeal by itself. Even the smell of it kind of puts me off. And I don't like the thought of just eating empty carbs in the morning. So then I thought I could maybe mix some things in that would be easy to pack and then I could have a more complete breakfast. So I decided that my perfect breakfast should have a little bit of protein, a little bit of healthy fats, and a little bit of flavor. I didn't want to eat something that didn't taste good. So then I began looking for my perfect protein. Back in college, I tried lots of whey proteins and I constantly felt congested and itchy and apparently I have a mild allergic reaction to whey protein. So that explains it. Whey protein seems like the most popular kind of protein and the most versatile in flavors out there, but it just wasn't gonna work for me. So next, I tried soy protein. I like soy protein because it's plant-based and it has a neutral taste. At the time, there was a lot of conflicting information about the safety and health effects of consuming too much soy. And I already consume a lot of soy in like tofu, sometimes I drink soy milk, and I was worried about overdoing it. So the first protein that I tried incorporating into my oatmeal was a vegetable protein blend and it tasted pretty terrible. I tried the vanilla flavor, I tried the chocolate flavor, and no amount of peanut butter could mask that. Every time I would run out of a protein container, then I would try another type, another brand, and eventually I started having pea protein. I really liked pea protein because it didn't trigger my allergies, so that was a plus, but there's a lot of really bad tasting pea protein out there. And apparently you also need to be a little bit cautious about how the peas are sourced. Eventually I found a pea protein that I really like and I look forward to having this every morning because it has a very pleasant taste. It's not overwhelming, it's not overly sweet, and I like that it comes in a five pound container and I can set it on a subscription on Amazon to make sure that I never run out. Along with my pea protein, I started putting peanut butter in my oatmeal and that was very delicious and it checked off my requirement for wanting to have a healthy fat in my oatmeal. Unfortunately, sometimes being tired in the morning, I'm not the most coordinated person. I found that occasionally I would spill my peanut butter and it would leave an oily mess. So after a while, I switched to peanut butter powder. Part of the reason I switched to peanut butter powder was because I took a good look at the macromolecules that I was consuming, and I realized at the time that I wasn't eating enough protein. By switching from peanut butter to peanut butter powder, 
I was able to reduce a little bit of the fat that I was consuming and increase the protein percentage. And if you look closely at this ingredients list, you'll notice that it has sugar. And I'm okay with that. Personally, I don't feel guilty about it. I don't eat candy, so I feel like I can comfortably compensate for that in my breakfast. But you have to find what works for you. So if you're a person who can't tolerate sugar well, then you probably want to stick with normal peanut butter or look for other alternatives. Anyone who knows me well will know that I am a true caffeine addict, so I could not have a complete breakfast without caffeine. And although I do have ample amounts of coffee every morning, I also wanted to give my breakfast a little bit of an extra caffeine boost. So I added matcha tea powder. I usually buy this at Costco, but you can also get it on Amazon. I really like this matcha because it has a nice matcha flavor and it comes in a bag that lasts a long time. So this has 225 servings and the serving's only half a teaspoon, but that half a teaspoon goes a long way in flavor. If you don't like matcha though, I would strongly recommend that you avoid this. And if you're interested in any of these products, I'll put a link down below in the description and you can check them out for yourself. Now it's time to make the oatmeal. So first, I use a quarter cup of oats. And the normal serving size for oats is half a cup, but the reason I do a quarter cup is because I'm already adding so many things to it that I feel like a quarter cup is sufficient to meet my needs. Then I add a little bit of water. I don't have a specific measurement for how much water I add, but I just go for it. And I put it in the microwave for one minute. Now my oatmeal is done. So here we are, freshly microwaved oatmeal. Next, I am going to add two scoops of my protein powder. Scoop one. Scoop two. The hardest part of my breakfast is getting these lids back on. Now I'm going to add two tablespoons of peanut powder. I keep my tablespoon already stored in here just so I don't have to look for it every morning. I try to level it out so that I can keep an accurate count of the macromolecules that I'm consuming. And lastly, I add my matcha powder. And I have a scoop that's buried in there. I'm going to use my spoon to get it out. All right. So the serving size is half a teaspoon, but I do a little bit less than that because I find that it has a strong flavor. All right, so a little under half. Here we go. I'm going to close this and hopefully I don't make a huge matcha cloud while I'm doing it. And here is my oatmeal. I don't know if you can see it very well, but here it is. Now I stir it all up. If I find that it doesn't have enough water, if it's not mixing well, I just add more water. And I like to keep a plate underneath because occasionally my powder spills out a little bit and that's okay, but it makes cleanup a lot easier. Now my hands are green from the matcha. Now that you've seen what I eat for breakfast, I would love to hear about what you eat for breakfast. So I would love to hear about that in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. So now I'm going to add more water to this because as you can see, it's not really mixing well. Now that I've added more water, this is a lot easier to mix. It's a lot more like traditional oatmeal. And now it's time for breakfast. So I hope all of you have a wonderful day and thanks for watching my video. I'll see you next time.